It's very sad when losing a loved one, having to deal with the loss, the financial side, the funeral arrangements. After everything has settled down and you've grasped this somber moment, you might go and visit their grave and put flowers, or to do what some may call paying respects. At least you can have the security that the parts of what once was a loved one are resting peacefully below the surface, right? Well, for some people, this isn't the case, as grave robbing and body snatching have been around since the dawn of time. Way back in 3000 BC, grave robbing first became a problem as wealthy Egyptians would be buried with all their valuables. These graves were like buried treasure to criminals. Body snatching, though, on the other hand, consists of taking the actual remains rather than the valuables. Body snatching reached high prominence in the US back in the early 1800s when medical science was greatly growing. Medical schools had a high need for cadavers to further study the human body. There weren't regulations like there are in modern times. Back then, the medical schools didn't question the cadavers they received, as it was better to give them the benefit of the doubt than to question. Today, body snatching has greatly declined, as there have been many regulations put in place to prevent this. And law enforcement has cracked down on people taking place in this atrocity. But with any crime, there's always going to be to serve people out there to commit it. And that's why this video is about grave robbing for morons. Grave Robbing for Morons was first found on a DVD called Ensuring Your Place in Hell. It's roughly 27 minutes long and appears to have been recorded on an 8mm or high 8s in the late 80s to maybe into the early 90s. The main character in the video calls himself Anthony and is with his friend Gino who is recording. Anthony appears to be in his 20s and might be Hispanic. They both speak with what sounds like a New York accent and Anthony has a stutter that he struggles with throughout the video. If you want, you can look for something underground. Uh, I'm underground. You should bring at least six, six people with you. You have to find some place really so, so, uh, so uh, I'm secluded. This was made by by Anthony. Guess, uh, um, well, as a matter of fact, let's forget the last name. However, it's what Anthony is holding and what this video is about that really gave it so much attention. After seeing this video, many people wondered, is it real? With anything this extreme or out there, people are naturally gonna shrug it off as fake. But let's take a closer look and find out. On this big, all right, if it's a male, you might have lines like that from the, from the baldness. You grab it here and peel it back like that. So you have to take something real thin and push it around, make sure it's all clean, all right? If you want, you can try diluted bleach on it, okay? You dip it in there for a few seconds, all right? This one will end up a little brown, okay, because it's very old. But if you find something new, it will be reddish all around it. The flesh is exactly as I've explained, like nothing flaky. It's nothing, there's nothing to be afraid of. Just look for dates that are over 60 years old. If I had something wet here, I would wet them up and let you see how the brains look. Never leave witnesses. If you have to knock them out, knock them out so that way they think it's a dream. It's best not to kill, but if it's necessary, do it. So you go to like magic shop where they like skulls and everything for rituals. So um, I think you could get around 250 for one of these. If you get a leg bone and it's carved into um, a necklace or something, you might get around 650 for it. Try not to leave that many clues around like videotapes, like exactly what we're making now. Don't make that five-year-old tombs look exactly the same as one-year-old or three-month-year-olds. Bring a knife, cut open the neck, rip off the rest, and it should pop out. It's going to smell. It might be, it might feel a little moldy. Don't think about it. Think of it as a prop. You have to make sure you do not get caught. If you get caught, this is a serious offense, and I know it. I don't know why I did this. It's fun. It's like your, uh, on your first four or five graves, they're going to be fun, but after a while, you're going to be like, I want money for this. The night before you do it, you should get laid. <laughs> you should get laid because that exercises certain muscles, and, it, and as a matter of fact, you do have a lot more um, energy, and there's a lot of things you might have to do while you're getting this out. It takes a lot of exercise, push a lot and everything. You might have to run a lot if you get caught. So that's about it for now. The next time we'll show you the coffin itself and why we opened it. 
This was made by uh, by Anthony. Uh, uh, um, well, as a matter of fact, let's forget the last name. Gino. Okay. This was made by us too. Everything we made this trend from now on. This is a trend. We will keep doing it for the fun. And our next big hit is Houdini. If you're watching this video, then you'll know who it was. Bye bye. So I watched the whole entire video while taking notes. I've also done some further research. So. Let's dig in. In the video, he talks about cleaning out the skull. I find it weird that he would be against soaking it, as that's how most bones are whitened. Bleach is the chemical that he brings up for whitening the skull, which is wrong. Bones are made up of both collagen and calcium phosphate. The collagen is more malleable and holds the harder calcium together. Bleach or sodium hypochlorite degrades the organic matrix in collagen, making the bones more fragile, which Anthony does bring up in the video and is the reason why he says to dilute it. But why not just use hydrogen peroxide, as it doesn't dissolve soft tissue and collagen? Hydrogen peroxide bleaches proteins very well, and it's what we use in our hair and to whiten our teeth. He emphasizes the use of a rag to remove tissue from the inside of the skull. He shows how you could insert the rag through the foramen magnum, which is a part of the skull where the spinal cord goes through. Using a rag could result in the fibers of the cloth getting caught in the rigid bone, resulting in chipping. It's pretty clear that his methods are amateur, which could point to this being fake. Never leave witnesses. If you have to knock them out, knock them out so that way they think it's a dream. This seems quite extreme and ineffective. Knocking someone out isn't going to make them think it's a dream, unless of course you hit them so hard that they get a concussion causing a cranial hemorrhage, which is the pooling of blood in the brain, which can cause severe brain damage resulting in memory loss. However, this comes with a host of other problems, making it a medical emergency, which will result in death if left untreated. In the video, he talks about how you can make good money selling these bones. She go to like magic shop where they like skulls and everything for rituals. So um, I think you could get around 250 for one of these. If you get a leg bone and it's carved into um, a necklace or something, you might get around 650 for it. He talks about how magic shops will buy them. I find this statement interesting. Although there is no law in the U.S. preventing the distribution of human remains, so long as they're not Native American. However, the way he's doing it is illegal, as there is a procedure that one must go through to exhume human remains. A process that he certainly has not gone through. It's also important to point out that the magic shops rarely sell or buy human bones. And when they do, they're not going to be comfortable with buying them from some random, non-reputable stranger. Everything that I've gone over seems to point at this being fake. However, I have come to the conclusion that this is indeed real. The skull that he is holding is everything but fake. It has more detail than any fake skull on the market, and the tissue and hair seen on it further adds to it being real. You can even see that the plates of the skull aren't even fused together, meaning that the person must have been in their 20s when they passed away. That level of detail means that those are in fact real human remains. He does seem to contradict himself a few times on camera though when he talks about how this was his second skull, but later says, But your second one's going to be a little boring. This is my second one. If that's only his second skull he's holding, then why did he mention that after four to five, you'll want money if he's only robbed two? I'm thinking that the one he's using for the demonstration is his second grade robbing, but he's done more after that. Everything that I've gone over that makes this seem false could be chalked up to a lack of knowledge, as the level of detail that he goes into when talking about his experience only leans on this thing to be real. The internet wasn't around back in the 80s like it is today. He couldn't just search how to bleach a skull and only had to guess that chlorine was the best way. I also want to point out how he said bleach makes bones fragile and to dilute it. He could have only figured this out through experience. At the end of the video, he talks about robbing Houdini next, and there hasn't been any proof of the robbery on Houdini's grave since then. This could be that he felt it was too risky and never attempted it. At the end of the video, when he's uttering names, he says, We worked hard, um, also, Bucci, Bucci and Christopher Bucci is one of the people involved in distributing this footage and has the same last name that Anthony seems to utter. It would seem like Christopher Bucci could have produced this. However, this video is supposed to be from the 80s to 90s. If you look at the video, you can see that they did a phenomenal job of making it look that way, as there isn't anything to disprove of this having been filmed in the 80s to 90s, meaning that Christopher Bucci may have distributed it, but I don't see any evidence that he produced it. After everything I've gone over, it seems like this is a video of a self-taught amateur grave robber who's trying to teach others how to do it his way. The setting, the skull, and his acting are so natural that I'd be blown away if this turned out to be fake. 
The only thing that remains a mystery is who Anthony is. Nobody to this day has been able to identify him. There have been leads, but each one has led to a dead end. If you have any idea, comment your findings down below. And if this does turn out to be fake, I will certainly do an update on it. Anyways, I hope you learned something from this video. Um, if you have any ideas for me and any videos want me to do in the future, be sure to comment them down below. Um, if you liked this um, style of video that I tried out, um, go ahead and give it a like and I'll be sure to do more like this in the future. I mean, I'm going to anyways. I want to do more videos that are more outside, like documentary, like unless everybody just totally hates them, but I feel like going outside is a lot more fun filming in different areas. If you want to see more videos like this, go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already, and turn on the notification bell so you get notifications whenever I upload a new video. And that's all I have for you. See you on the other side.